I tested just about every feature in the Samsung ecosystem. There are so many quirky and fun things, like turning on your smart oven from your phone. I'm gonna rate all of them, and is it better than the Apple ecosystem? Okay, Samsung doesn't just make these things, but they also make arguably some of the best TVs on the market. And a Samsung phone can act like a remote pretty sensible feature. What's not is casting your phone's camera onto the TV. I've never seen my face this big. It's like having your own billboard at home. They say you can use it like a mirror for workouts or to attend meetings, but is anyone actually doing this? Anyways, a more normal use case is casting your phone or tablet screen to the TV. It's just one click, and then when scrolling through the gallery, it full screens it automatically. These phone videos really do look a lot more impressive on this giant screen. But you've seen casting to a TV before. However, have you seen a TV that can cast your phone or tablet? So even if you're cooking, you won't miss whatever's on TV. And you're supposed to be able to just tap the TV and transfer whatever's on your phone to it, but it just doesn't work for me at all. Four out of five. And next, Quick Share, which is just like AirDrop, but for sharing files between Samsung devices. I found that nearby devices appear pretty quickly, even if they're not signed into the same Samsung account. But the best part about Quick Share is that you don't actually need a Samsung laptop for it to work. You can download the Quick Share app on any Windows computer, and it's actually very nicely integrated. You can right click on a file, and then the Quick Share option is right there. But let's see if Quick Share is actually quicker than AirDrop. Three, two, one, go. This is one gigabyte of the same data. For the two Samsung devices, the transfer took 17 seconds. AirDrop took quite a bit longer. I was actually pretty surprised by just how much faster QuickShare is. AirDrop ended up taking 33 seconds, which is almost double the time. There's about one in 15 times where QuickShare just doesn't work for no apparent reason, but overall, it's more than fast enough for everyday transfers. And I'm also glad that it's very well supported on Windows computers, especially because I've actually found that it works much more reliably than the alternative built-in option, which is nearby share. And of course, the bonus is that it's quite significantly faster than AirDrop, so five out of five. If you like going out alone and taking pictures, the camera control on the watch is so useful. Wait, I can do this too. So as soon as you click the camera app on the Galaxy Watch, it launches the camera app on the phone. And then you can see the preview on the watch. It's pretty useful for all the phones that are not Z Flips. You can also switch between photo and video. And even on watches without a physical dial, you can zoom in and out just by running your fingers around the watch rim. It actually gives a bit of haptic feedback and feels pretty satisfying. And you're supposed to be able to switch between the front and back cameras, but it just doesn't seem to work at all. So 3.5 out of five. All right, next feature. Samsung phones and tablets can actually work very well with any Windows computer through Link to Windows. You might argue that it's a Windows ecosystem feature, but all those Samsung phones and tablets have a toggle in the quick settings. So I'm gonna count it. With the Phone Link app on Windows, you can see all of the phone's notifications, check messages, make calls. You can also look at photos and even transfer them over. And you can access the phone's apps if for any reason you wanna do that. It's pretty laggy though. Wouldn't recommend playing Subway Surfers with a trackpad but you can also access the entire phone screen through screencast. It's not the best quality, but it could still be handy. And a somewhat hidden feature is that while running the screencast, you can transfer files from the laptop to the phone just by dragging the file on top of it. It's pretty nice. The first time setup process was a little bit buggy for me, but after that, it's been able to connect really fast. Considering that you can use any Windows PC or laptop, I think it's a worthy trade-off. The Apple ecosystem does set up more seamlessly, and just like the phone link, it also lets you get messages calls, notifications on the computer. However, it cannot access the phone screen and you also cannot see photos that are on the phone but not on iCloud. So I would actually say that Samsung and Windows have it beat in this regard. Overall, I give it a 4.6 out of five. Now, before I show you some of the most unique Samsung features, I wanna quickly show you this laptop that I've been using from today's video sponsor, Omen. So this is the Omen Transcend 14. It's a gaming laptop, but it really doesn't feel like one because it's so thin and light. It's actually Omen's lightest gaming laptop ever. This laptop can be spec'd up to an Intel Core Ultra 9 185H processor. It's Intel's latest performance processor built on the Intel 4 process technology. And you can also have up to an NVIDIA 4070 GPU and 
32 gigs of RAM in this chassis. So this laptop is designed so that you can play games or edit content or do schoolwork anywhere all on the same device without the weight of a typical gaming laptop. The idea is that you can go anywhere, do anything with Intel Core Ultra processors. But I think my favorite part is the screen. It's a 14 inch 2.8K 120Hz OLED. It's super sharp and gaming on it feels really smooth, all while not compromising the movie watching experience. This keyboard is also kind of fun with the RGB lights coming through all around the translucent part of the keycap. And you can further customize the RGBs in the Omen Light Studio. And as for cooling all of the hardware in this super thin laptop, so it uses Intel's hyperbaric cooling technology called dual channel flow. It creates a pressurized zone over the internals for direct heat exchange to the rear vents to keep the laptop cool while not blowing hot air towards your mouse. And lastly, a super fun addition for the laptop is that it comes bundled with the HyperX Cloud 3 wireless headset, which has an automatic 2.4 gigahertz ultra low latency connection to the Omen Transcend 14. You can pre-order this on omen.com and it's also linked down below. Okay, take a guess what app this is. And you're wrong because it's actually half of an app. It's just a toolbar for Samsung Notes, which is running on this tablet right now. Realistically, it doesn't give you that much more screen real estate on the tablet, but just seeing the notes being full screen and having this little control pad feels kind of cool. And more practically, Samsung Notes has quite a bit more features than Apple Notes, like with these page templates. It also has much better support for handwriting. You can draw on and around typed text and also insert images anywhere. The only problem is that syncing between devices takes an average of 10 seconds, and it can be even slower if there are images involved. So four out of five. DeX is probably the most unique Samsung feature. It's pretty useful, especially on a tablet where you can use it without an external screen. DeX is kind of like a reskin of the operating system, where it makes window management feel more like a regular computer with these floating windows that you can resize. I will count it as an ecosystem feature because if you have a Samsung TV or monitor and a supportive phone, you can use DeX wirelessly. Although its use cases are pretty limited because when you're just at home, you probably just use a regular computer. And while on the go, when are you gonna encounter a Samsung TV in the wild. Overall, it works as intended and it's very useful on tablets, so five out of five. If you're not into DeX and just want a real computer operating system, you can still use a tablet just by making it into a second screen for Windows computers, which is also the name of this feature. It's a quick settings toggle on Samsung tablets and you just need to download the second screen app from Samsung on Windows. It connects pretty fast and it's also pretty stable, but a weird limitation is that it only does this over Wi-Fi. Like plugging in a cable literally doesn't affect it at all. And so there is some lag and you're also limited to 60 Hertz even even if the tablet does support a higher refresh rate. Overall, it's super useful when you're traveling with a tablet, and I think it's a great idea, but the implementation from Samsung could be better. And actually, I did find a better solution. So if you actually do have this use case very often, the third-party app called Super Display might be worth it. It supports wired connection, so it's less laggy, and it even supports up to 120Hz. I think Apple Sidecar is slightly better than Samsung's default implementation because it can be a wired connection, and so it can be more reliable and less laggy. But still, both of these are worse than the Super Display. So for that, I give the second screen feature a three out of five. And now onto some rapid fire ones. Galaxy Buds can automatically switch between Samsung devices and it's quite reliable. You can be watching a video on the phone and if you start playing a video on the tablet, it'll switch to it pretty quickly. And then if you go back to the phone, it'll automatically switch back again. It's pretty good. And while it cannot switch automatically with any Windows computers, only Samsung laptops, you can download the Galaxy app on Windows and be able to tweak various settings on the Buds, which is still pretty good. So five out of five. And next, if you're holding onto this giant tablet, but you need to do something on your phone and you just wish your phone can just magically appear, oh wait, it's here. So this is done through the pre-installed Samsung Flow app. Basically, you just click this button and then you can cast the phone screen to the tablet. And it can be very useful so that you don't have to separately go grab your phone. But in order to mirror the phone screen, you do need to first unlock the phone. It kind of defeats a helpful part of it. Three out of five. Copy and pasting works very well between Samsung devices. It works for text, of course, but also photos and even hand-drawn things. Although when they paste, they become like a picture instead of still being hand-drawn, as in you can't erase it. And overall, the copying and pasting has worked very fast and reliably for me. Also, through the phone link app on Windows, you can copy and paste with a Windows computer. It also works for text and files, and I've also found it to be very reliable and fast. Honestly, I'm very surprised with just how seamless 
ridiculous it is, even with non-Samsung devices. Five out of five. Calls and texts can be shared between Samsung devices. And for text, it's instant. Like I can send a message from the tab and instantly I can see the sent message on the phone. This is very similar to apps like Discord. And it's actually a lot faster than iMessage on Apple, which can sometimes take a bit to sync. So five out of five. After enabling instant hotspot through the phone link app on Windows, your phone's hotspot will automatically show up in the computer's Wi-Fi tab. So you can just one click connect to it. It's pretty good. One ecosystem benefit that you can only get with a Samsung laptop is multi-control, where you can use the same mouse and keyboard across a tablet or even a phone and the laptop. But otherwise, you still get most of the ecosystem features even when using a non-Samsung Windows laptop. And I think that's really nice. The Samsung ecosystem is actually really complete. It shares most of its major features with the Apple ecosystem. Of course, both sides have their unique features like Samsung has DeX, but overall, I do like how the Samsung ecosystem is more open and lots of its features can be used with non-Samsung devices. But let me know which one you prefer in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe.